Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how an action potential is transmitted along a myelinated axon. Scientists call this process saltatory conduction. You should then be able to describe the factors that affect the speed of the conductance of the action potential. In the last video, we saw how an action potential is transmitted down a non myelinated axon, and you need to watch that video before you watch this one. Remember that when a stimulus triggers the axon to depolarize, voltage gated sodium ion channels open. Sodium ions now diffuse rapidly into the axon interior down their electrochemical gradient. This causes the charge in the axon to switch from negative to positive, and this depolarization is called the action potential. We can see that taking place in region A of this diagram. The sodium ions then move along the interior of the axon attracted to nearby negative charge, and scientists call this a localized electrical circuit. In this case, the localized electrical circuit is towards region B. This now triggers voltage gated sodium ion channels in region B to open, and sodium ions now diffuse into the axon interior, depolarizing region B. So, as you can see, the action potential has moved down the axon. Voltage gated potassium ion channels now open in region A. Potassium ions now diffuse out of region A down their electrochemical gradient, and this begins the process of repolarization. The action potential now makes its way to region C. So, when an action potential is transmitted along a non myelinated axon, the wave of depolarization passes along the whole axon. Okay, I'm showing you here a myelinated axon. Remember that in a myelinated axon, the axon is surrounded by a myelin sheath. Myelin is a fatty material that acts as an electrical insulator. Every 1 to 3 millimeters along the axon, there are gaps in the myelin sheath. These gaps are called the nodes of Ranvier. So let's see how an action potential is propagated along a myelinated axon. Remember that in the resting axon, the inside has a negative charge relative to the outside. Imagine that a stimulus triggers depolarization of the left part of the axon. Voltage gated sodium ion channels now open in the membrane at node A. Sodium ions now diffuse into the axon down the electrochemical gradient at node A. This depolarizes the axon at node A, making the inside positive relative to the outside. The positive sodium ions are now attracted sideways towards the negative charges at node B. So this creates a localized electrical circuit between node A and node B. This triggers voltage gated sodium ion channels at node B to open. Sodium ions now diffuse into the axon at node B, which now depolarizes. Again, localized electrical circuits form between node B and node C, and this triggers node C to depolarize. So, the key idea you need to understand is that in myelinated axons, depolarization does not take place in every part of the axon. Instead, the action potential jumps from one node of Ranvier to the next. This is called saltatory conduction. Due to saltatory conduction, action potentials are transmitted much more rapidly down myelinated axons than in non myelinated axons, where saltatory conduction does not take place. Remember that in a non myelinated axon, the wave of depolarization must pass down the whole axon. Whereas in a myelinated axon, the local electrical circuits are much longer, so transmission is much faster. Now, there is another advantage to saltatory conduction. Because depolarization only takes place at the nodes of Ranvier, that means that only these regions need to be repolarized. Repolarization requires ATP for the action of the sodium potassium pump. So, because of saltatory conduction, less ATP is required to repolarize a myelinated axon compared to a non myelinated axon. Okay, so as we've seen, saltatory conduction increases the speed of transmission of an action potential. The speed of transmission is also greater in axons with a wider diameter. In a wider axon, there's less resistance to ion flow within the cytoplasm. Warmer temperatures also increase the speed of transmission. That's because ions diffuse faster at a warmer temperature. However, this only applies up to around 40 degrees Celsius. 
above 40 degrees Celsius, proteins denature, for example ion channels and the sodium-potassium pump. In the next video, we look at the role of synapses.